ریڈیو زندگی 1170 سیونٹی اے ایم پر ویلکم لسنرز میں ہوں آپ کے ساتھ میں ایرا ویلکم ٹو دا شارپ ریئرلی لا شو وی آر ونس اگین جوائن بائی شارپ ریئرلی ہو از دا فاؤنڈر پریزیڈنٹ اینڈ مینیجنگ اٹارنی آف دا شارپ ریئرلی لا گروپ وچ از رائٹر ان نو ورک ہی از اے ممبر آف دا امیریکن امیگریشن لائرس ایسوسی ایشن ایز ویل ایز دا اسٹیٹ بار آف کیلیفورنیا ہی از اے پیشنیٹ ایڈوکیٹ آف ہیومن رائٹس سول رائٹس سوشل ایکشن اینڈ سوشل سروسز اینڈ ہی ہیز اے اسٹرانگ انٹرسٹ ان اینڈ نالج آف دا political and legal system right here in the US. He formed his law group to work on the causes that he feels most ardent about. The law group focuses on immigration law with an emphasis on employment-based immigration and he does help his clients all over the US. Offices are in Newark, San Francisco and Washington, D.C. Listeners, if you'd like to get in touch with him, you could do so right now during the show. You can call him on the studio number 510-657-1170. اٹرنی شاہ پیر علی جو ہیں وہ امپلائمنٹ بیسڈ امیگریشن پہ خاص دھیان دیتے ہیں تو اگر آپ کا کوئی امپلائمنٹ کا یا امیگریشن کا کیس چل رہا ہے تھرو یور امپلائر اینڈ اف یو ہیو سم کائنڈ آف کوشچن ڈاؤٹس خاص کر کے ابھی جب اتنی انسرٹنٹی ہے ہر چیز میں آپ ضرور ان سے بات کر سکتے ہیں اسٹوڈیو نمبر پر ان کے آفس کا نمبر ہے فائیو ون زیرو سیون فور ٹو فائیو ایٹ ایٹ سیون ڈیز فائیو ٹین سیون فور ٹو فائیو ایٹ ایٹ سیون اور ان کی ویب سائٹ ہے پیرلی لا ڈاٹ کام ڈیز پی ای ای آر اے ایل ایل وائی ایل اے ڈبلو ڈاٹ کام ود آؤٹ اینی فردر ڈیلے اٹرنی شاہ ویلکم ٹو دا شو گڈ مارننگ گڈ مارننگ گڈ مارننگ ٹو آل دا لسنرز تھینک یو فار ویلکمنگ می اینڈ ٹو ڈے آف کورس وی آر گوئنگ ٹو ٹاک اباؤٹ امیگریشن اینڈ بیفور آئی اسٹارٹ Anything I'm going to tell you today is my opinion. You should not act or refrain to act solely on the information provided. You should contact an attorney if you have any questions. So today uh, we're going to discuss about different things. And of course, people will be able to call uh, if you have a, any questions, 510-657-1170. And if you want a private consultation, feel free to reach out to our office. 510-742-5887 and our website is piralilaw.com P-E-E-R-A-L-L-Y law L-A-W dot com and also our YouTube channel Sharp Rally Law please subscribe to it because recently a lot of people told me that I didn't write any articles but it's been a little bit hectic with all the things going on but yeah. I'm going to soon start writing some more but the thing is just like it's easier for me just to put a YouTube out there and it makes things easier for people and most people now are becoming audio they, they don't really want to read so let's see uh, how things unfold but many things are happening around for one the famous visa bulletin which brought good news we also have now a lot of um, uh, frustration and uncertainty in the fact that uh, we have already reached the 28th today and we have not gotten the the new visa bulletin for November yep. and the reason that they're disclosing is because supposedly they have some language issue on the priority dates and uh, which i don't really kind of buy anymore what does that mean God knows exactly. That's, that's the, the problem that a lot of people are asking me, and I don't know the answer because I think it, it's more related to they want to know exactly how many applications they got based on that, but that means we are not going to get a visa built in until probably maybe 1st of November itself, which okay. really kind of makes things a little bit uh, um, worrisome for many because some were wanted to check what will happen to EB2 before mm-hmm. they jump on EB3 True. and now it's kind of late so people should um, still try their EB3 and maybe later maybe withdraw it something like that. Uh, Tanisha, uh, I, I actually wanted to request you last week when we had Attorney Sharif also join us and he was telling why it would be uh, you know uh, not such a good idea for people to jump on to uh, another category or why it would be some, a good idea for certain people. Could you do a quick recap for those who might have missed it? Definitely. Remember definitely. he was talking about EB2 and EB3, how jumping would yeah, help exactly. some and not help some. So okay. if you could just do a recap because it's a new show, some people might have missed it and you know if, if, it's, if it just helps them. Definitely, definitely. Uh, the, the reason that Sharif was bringing that up because what we are seeing 
uh, most of us know it's probably a political move. Mm -hmm. So what we've seen is they have given a boon, that's all, a band-aid kind of. So what they did, they, they actually give an EB3, which should have been there for a long time now. Suddenly it appeared. The reason it appeared is because in around 2010 and up, a lot of people moved from EB3 to EB2. And some of them got their green card, which means the EB3 category has not been used. So it should have brought, been brought back in the basket, but they didn't. Now suddenly, uh, I, I think personally it's political reasons, might be other reasons, we, are, we saw that they brought it in the basket, but they didn't really bring it in the, in the, uh, completely in the basket. All they did is say that it's coming, so that's why they put the filing date current, right? So that's number one issue. So we don't know what's the final action date, which is actually the time when you get the green card, because the rest is just a matter of getting the EAD advanced parole and possibly the, the ability to do AC21 transfer the case, which is good in itself, but it has its own um, headache, because once you move your case to a to an I-140. What what people have been are doing right now. There are two ways to do that. One is an amendment, and the other one is basically refiling the the I-140 uh, and. Uh, what we call the EB3. So people on EB2 have been have been doing that, and what it entails is basically you are you are saying, hey, I want to use the same labor certification, but I want to downgrade to an EB3 because an EB3 can attach to a labor certification of EB2, but not vice versa. So now the problem is once you do that, you are already kind of uh, getting rid of that EB2. So if it gets approved, you move to EB3. Now, if later on EB2 moves faster, to move back to EB2, you have to do the same thing. Mm -hmm. And for most of us, um, there's no experience based on that, to be honest. Only few cases that have been done in the past are for the Chinese community, but they never really kind of put it back to EB2. So what will happen is because there's an influx of application based on EB3, uh, we are going to see uh, a backlog coming on EB3. That's pretty much a given because there's no way out of it. But what will happen is that EB2 will keep climbing, maybe slowly but steadily, and then people who will want to move to EB2 will create more confusion because they're, they're, they're juggling from EB2 to EB3. If they have a different labor certification, they're doing it, it will be a little bit easier, but we don't know how this thing is going to unfold because the experience is very, very limited on that. So everything is working in theory right now, and we'll have to see how the USCIS is going to react. Right. And that's where we are, we are seeing uh, a lot of confusion. And, of course, with a non-transparent um, government, you don't even know what they are planning to do. Uh, tomorrow, and uh, that's one of the reasons people who can vote go out and vote. <laughs> so it's um, we are really kind of in a situation where so much uncertainty, but people are jumping on it, and I agree with them because I myself have been doing few of those cases, but I don't even know what the outcome will be, except mm. we are thinking in theory it will work well. Now, the, the problem also by downgrading to EB3 you're basically using an old labor certification. So at the time when you got your EB3 probably approved, it was under what we call um, Obama time. And things were a lot easier, even though they were strict. They were not that strict. So what will happen, what happened is that based on the memo that came, I think, in 2017, every case that, that the USCIS now reviews, they have to go back in time and check everything that they have not checked before. Mm -hmm. So if there are any kind of glitch on your, on your labor certification, it can really come back and, and make you not only lose the EB3, but also lose the EB2. And that's the highest risk that a lot of people are going to, to basically um, uh, take a chance with. And uh, there's no way to tell how this is going to unfold, but I'm pretty sure, unfortunately, some cases where things were, were sliding and without people realizing it might come back during that second application. So I, I highly recommend that you, before you make any move, now it's kind of late, we don't know how things are going to unfold for the next month, but if it continues, make sure you double check before you do that. Now, 
if you uh, you have a case with company, you have a labor certification with company A and you move to B, but A has not canceled it, there's nothing that prevents you from filing your adjustment of status uh, with company A, provided the company A agrees to that. Now the problem becomes if you want to downgrade with that company and then move forward on that. And that's, uh, uh, that's where things are going to really get uh, tricky because they will have to prove what we call ability to pay. And ability to pay, uh, it becomes a, a big issue uh, in the future because um, what we see here is when you were working for the company, you were getting paid a certain amount. It was easy to, pay, to show the ability to pay. But if you're no longer working for that company, what you're faced with is uh, prove the ability to pay to what we call net profit or net current assets. And many small companies are not doing well right now with the COVID situation, so you might be faced with new problems. So think well before you do that. You can talk to us to get a second opinion by calling us, 510-7425-887, just to let you know all the consultation I do myself personally. And uh, we, I'll be glad to assess your case and make sure things can be done in a smooth fashion. Now. The other thing that that, um, that um, Sharif brought up is if you're seeing such kind of situation now, you basically are in that EB3, EB2, you cannot have both. What we are proposing is to get you an EB2 as a backup under National Trust Waiver. So remember when I said that it is difficult maybe to upgrade it back, then that National Trust Waiver, if you have it, since it belongs to you, even you change company or anything, we can, if the dates become current and EB2, all we have to do is to shift the I-45 adjustment of status, which makes things a lot better for you because then you, you basically have two things, not two things because uh, the adjustment of status can only go with one thing, but the EB2 will be without any issue uh, for that you see right now being dependent on a company, having to go through a lot of, of the headache. There's no labor certification in National Trust Waiver. There's not even an employer in there. So it is a good op opportunity that you can have if you want to go for it. Give us a call, 510-742-5887. I hope that answers your question, Ira. Yes, it does. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, listeners, let me quickly remind you that if you need to speak to Attorney Sharp, you really up phone kar sakte hain abhi right now on the studio number 510-657-1170 that's 510-657-1170 is number pe phone karke aap unse baat kar sakte hain we have attorney shafi rali with us on air till 11 a.m. uske alawa agar aapko baat karni hai like he said uh, you know if you want to have a private discussion about your case you can call the office number 510-742-5887 that's 510-742-5887 or the website for more information about him and his practice is puralilaw.com that's p-e-e-r-a-l-l-y-l-a-w.com puralilaw.com remember Abhi ke liye koi bhi hai, any employment based immigration question you can call us right now like we also said before there is so much uncertainty right now that uh, you know, a lot of uh, confusion is also happening to people. Aap phone karke apna doubt clear kar sakte hai. 510-657-1170. I actually also wanted to ask you, Attorney Shah, when I woke up this morning and I read, uh, you know, read the news about uh, Justice Amy Coney uh, Barrett being sworn in that in the midnight ceremony, what's your take on it and what do you think, how is that going to affect uh, immigration? Yeah. That's really bad. Um, actually, the I question or the situation? Like a, I should have, I should have talked about this first because this is going to really. First of all, she is not even experienced to be in the Supreme Court. I have argued more cases than this woman actually okay. in my life. So, um, not in a bad way, but she also has this uh, far, uh, uh, far right approach to things, which includes immigration. Uh, health care, um, Roe versus Wade, abortion, etc., etc., which now we're going to see a, a huge reversal. Um, the only way we can really kind of change the, the, the balance now in the Supreme Court, um, because she's really bad news, definitely. Immigration is not going to be an exception, so okay. get ready for it, because what will happen when people are going to send the case to, to the U.S. Supreme Court, 
uh, you're going to see them siding usually with the government, and that's going to be really bad. Mm. Now, again, you know, you never know. Sometimes if you put someone in the Supreme Court and suddenly you see them changing, but that's very, very rare. But um, having said that now, um, the truth is we are, we are going to see some really um, tough things happening. Uh, in fact, I was saying that... Uh, um, on my on my Facebook page, I was saying the election doesn't matter anymore now if it is based on that because the Supreme Court is is a life uh, tenure, so that means she's going to stay there forever, and she's pretty young, mm. and she's going to outlive many of us. And if she's very very conservative and not very, she has more religious views. I'm a religious person too, but. I, you cannot impose it on other people, right? True. So what will happen is that you're going to see this a lot. And also, we are, we are expecting um, a lot of more uh, really kind of unfortunate things that, that she would probably do to, to, to the system. But having said that now, what can be done, that's the only way we can actually save it. If the, the Democrats win back both houses, and of course, win the election, the presidency. That's the only way you're going to be really able to change this, because uh, then you can expand the Supreme Court. But I don't know if they will have the guts to do it. Unfortunately, sorry to say that, but the Democrats are kind of don't have a lot of spine sometimes. So not that, very aggressive, that, you mean? Yeah. Yeah, exactly, and and that will will really kind of um, uh, affect the entire thing. So my hope is um, is that uh, we will be able to expand the Supreme Court, which which under the Constitution is is allowed, and that's the only way to really kind of uh, deal with that because there will be a disbalance right now. We, for ages, we have depended on the Supreme Court to protect us against an abusive government, but now if you have an abusive government plus a Supreme Court which is pro that government, then mm. you're going to see some really major, um, it's basically no checks and balances. And now with also Trump trying to pass an executive order where civil servants have to basically be um, at his mercy, they cannot criticize him or things like that. It's, it's, we are gearing towards a dictatorship, definitely. Um, the, I hope the Constitution, uh, they are re already kind of... Um, slaughtering the beautiful constitution because to be honest with you I've, I've lived in many countries but the, the, the only man-made constitution I, I've seen the best is probably the American, American constitution, constitution. Mm -hmm. yes and, uh, and that, that thing gets, gets shattered we are done um, America will, will be totally different country we will be a lot of people who tell me oh I support Trump because he doesn't go to war but that's not really true. He went to war with American people, in fact. So <laughs> that's, that's where the problem is. We didn't go to war outside, but we went to war with our own. And now we are seeing a lot of people suffering, and it's going to get worse. 2021 is not going to be a better year, no matter what. Maybe in four or five years, if we can survive climate change, we should be okay. But the biggest issue we're going to face in the next coming five years, unemployment, health issues, um, even you change the government to fix all this is going to be tough. But Democrats have a good reputation of fixing things, but uh, unfortunately you're going to have the Republicans have the rep reputation of, of also now always kind of um, fighting everything. So they won't let things happen that easily, even though it's fixed in their own, own favor. So mm -hmm. now having said that, I'm not a Democrat, to be honest. <laughs> I'm more an independent, but I... I, I I actually like Obama. That's when I really kind of got involved in, in uh, as a Democrat. But before that, I was more a, a, an independent. But the truth is that um, at this point, fixing the mess is going to be really tough. I hope Sanders is going to be in the administration if Biden wins. Now, the question, will Biden win? I don't know. Um, that's really questionable. A lot of people are so uh, confident he will win that they might not go and vote. So... That's another problem that is going to be the issue. And for people who support Trump, good luck to you because I can't stand it. So I'm sorry. I just, <laughs> I just can't accept, accept it. So the, the, we are really hmm. going to, we are at the corner uh, of, um, of a really, uh, things, 
think so, definitely. It has already changed. 2020 has been the, the year of surprises, uh, yep. pandemic, Anything can you happen. name it. it yeah, even aliens on other planets. We <laughs> so many things happening, right? So it's like it's like really this year is like a piled up of things that we don't even understand. Plus, I just heard today that it's the first time in history that the Arctic is not freezing. So that's another thing that is because climate change is major for me. Uh, it's going to maybe people think it's not related to immigration, but it does because a lot of people are going to migrate because of climate change. You're going to see countries like Bangladesh probably uh, having major migration issues. Um, India is going to be affected. China is going to be affected, and all that part of Asia will be affected because people will not have space to leave. Yes. and um, and that's going to be major, creating major wars because. Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. Right? Nobody's working together. They're all fighting each other. So it's um, it's not like in the movies where you see everybody getting together trying to save the planet. In fact, everybody's getting together just to save themselves. And plus, not only saving themselves, uh, trying to to take as much as they can from the other. And um, Africa is going to be different. It's already getting different. Um, uh, Asia, of course, Europe is pretty much gone most of it. <laughs> so we are going to see some major things are uh, happening. Uh, the few countries still standing, probably New Zealand, Canada, and things like that. And I don't know how long they will be able to hold. So let's see how things unfold. Uh, that this election is not only crucial for for America; it's crucial for humanity for because humanity, yeah. if we yeah, um, if we don't change things uh, the way we are going, and today I heard also they are going to log in in Alaska, cutting all nine thousand million acres of, of of trees. Can you imagine what this is going to do to the oxygen levels in the world? You know, it's actually pretty so, eye-opening when you said that climate change also affects immigration because you know, I mean, when we talk about climate change, we usually just talk about climate change all over the world in different places and not really affecting other things that you know, of course, affecting flora and fauna is a different thing. But when you say that it affects immigration as well because people start immigrating because they don't have a place to live it's not it's, it's not as it used to be but i can also imagine somebody specifically saying that oh if things are not freezing it's good right so <laughs> you know what i'm trying to say yeah definitely because i wrote an article i think 6 years ago about this and uh, it was published on some newspapers, I don't remember which one, but about migration and climate change. Uh, mm -hmm. Because one person from from one island which was disappearing, he went to England and requested asylum based on his island basically sinking. Okay. And you know, countries like Maldives, um, even my island probably might be sinking in the next 20 years mm. uh, where I was born. So it's like, um, it, it's a real big mess because uh, many of those beautiful places which are still clean and everything, they are going to go down the sea and the other places that will survive are going to be f piled up with garbage. So how is know, it going to work if people want to, so climate change takes away homes and if people want to migrate but the immigration policies are getting stricter and stricter, where do people go? What do you think is going to happen eventually? Well, eventually there will be wars, just like what's happening hmm. already if you see in the Mediterranean Sea where they are just letting the, the, all the, the people stay um, on the sea and basically dying there. Uh, some countries are making an effort to save them, but most are not. Um, they're just putting them back uh, secretly in the water and letting them die there and we are seeing this massive death they, they, they don't go in the news because nobody wants to know about it yeah. but at least thousands and thousands of migrants moving from from Africa to to the Europe are being left to die in the sea we we still seeing what Trump did with the children but there's something worse happening in Europe which unfortunately nobody is talking about because it's um, it's happening and it's happening in many places a slave market has has risen, um, and uh, so many things that w was outrageous or have been outrageous always, but mm -hmm. we have seen it in our times, like our generation, we see it like, hey, this kind of thing doesn't happen in our times, but it's happening back. It's happening, and, yeah. And it's getting, it's getting worse and worse. So uh, with the climate change, you're going to see... Um, a lot of things are happening um, to people because they are going to be suffering from 
from um, they will not have a choice either they die or they move and you're going to see huge migration and that in the in the 1100s um, the Mongols uh, probably everybody knew them mm-hmm. they they migrated because of food and they end up by building an empire True. taking over pretty much all the land but the reason they, they wanted to move is because they needed their, their because they were sheep herders right so they had to move to get uh, to get food for their for their uh, animals. Mm. And at the end of the day, they keep taking land more and more, and that's what um, uh, I'm expecting. The stronger country are going to move towards the smaller ones, and it's going to keep going like that. In your introduction, uh, I should also put, you know, that you are an activist for uh, uh, environmentalist, and you should also put historian in your introduction. I should start saying that for the next <laughs> time. <laughs> no, 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 I'm not a historian. I'm very much interested in what's happening happening in the past yes. you know, what might happen in the future you know because if you don't know your past you won't be able to mm. to kind of get I an see. idea but yes. the difference at that time is um, nature still had a stronger hold so we there will be wars but nature still was intact this time we both are getting destroyed and if we don't watch out in the next seven years actually and uh, there is a big clock now they put in New York um, where they calculated it. They say seven years more to go. But that's a long discussion. But going back to, <laughs> to the part of immigration. Immigration, really yes. Kind of a, <laughs> yes, because that's related to that. It's definitely because that's why we're seeing a lot of applications. And that's why you're also seeing a lot of pushback. And countries like India and China, where they have the highest population, of course, there will be the highest immigration. But um, because of that, it will create a lot of friction between those countries, uh, including the United States. And, and if we don't get some kind of government which is um, um, kind of more humane, I should say, we're going to see uh, a lot of, of uh, worse than we saw as the kids who were uh, put in cage uh, in the U.S. So. Get ready for that. Let's see. In the six days, right, we have to go to <laughs> to know what's happening. Five days, actually, no, six days, six days. So we will know exactly where things are in America and the world. So, um, just to mention one thing, I, I, I wanted to tell people uh, again, uh, if they want to call to, uh, not about environment because I, I know this, <laughs> <laughs> but about immigration, they can call us five one zero seven four two five eight eight seven. Yes. Um, going back to 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 the question you were asking originally the judge Barrett there this is another thing that is going to be bad for us because a lot of those laws protecting the forest the wildlife etc you're going to see her not really kind of uh, support it and um, and unfortunately basically we're going to get rid of our lungs and if we get rid of our lungs um, we can't breathe so uh, again go back to we can't breathe so that's that's all the thing that might happen in 2021 actually and now we are also seeing another thing I forgot to mention earlier I was talking about the EB2 EB3 downgrade mm-hmm. one of the ELA uh, alerts mentioned I think last week that many people who filed in the premium and the Texas service center were, were rejected and that's what we've been saying to people don't file it in the premium because there's no purpose to file this in the premium at this point wait file the case if later premium is accepted then you go ahead and upgrade it don't file in the premium so I just wanted to mention that to people and as you know I, I, I was mentioning earlier we are seeing the vis- we are not seeing the visibility and that's that's kind of a little bit uh, uh, worrisome because uh, without the visibility, in, we 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 can't really guide ourselves what to do next. But uh, uh, if there's no v- new visa bulletin, it would mean that whatever uh, uh, changes or whatever forms have been going on, that's how it will continue until we see the next visa bulletin, right? There's no changes as such. <laughs> there's no rule on that. There's no rule on that. It never, it never happened before. So we, again, another 2020 effect, a lot of things never happened. So technically, you are right. But legally, they might say, no, hold on a second. We don't have to accept it because it's just a matter of technicality. Now is a visible chain and you should hold your horses. So... It is uh, it is opening a kind of worms just because of of some stupid discussion supposedly. Now 
what will happen to, to people who file after the deadline of October 31st. Uh, uh, so uh, it is it is um, it is unfortunately that we are in a situation of of um, uncertainty and like anything else uh, like jobs like the economy <laughs> like the environment mm -hmm. we are really in a situation of uncertainty so whenever you have this kind of situation my best advice is to make sure like you said you know if you can file it just give it a shot well, what are you going to lose uh, if they have not changed it so we can still use the old one and we can always uh, make it, um, a complaint later say hey, you should have accepted it because you are at fault you never change it so Yes, this is going to be some kind of extreme uh, push that if people who are late to file their cases, they still want to file, you should go ahead. But having said that, there's no law to support us. It's just a matter of a we are in a situation which never happened before, so they never really kind of provided for that. Yeah, no one was prepared for this. Before we go further, uh, Attorney Shah, let me quickly remind all our listeners that uh, if you have any questions about employment-based immigration, about your visa uh, application, or uh, if it's about your uh, green card, you can just call us right away on the studio number and ask your question. Call us right away on 510-657-1170. That's 510-657-1170. 70. Call us on this number and speak to Attorney Shah Pirali on air. Um, he is with us uh, till 11 a.m. So, you can call us and uh, let's speak to our first caller. Let's see what they'd like to ask you. Hello, you're on air with Attorney Shah Pirali. Ah, Dira Ji, bol rahi hai. Ji, Muhammad Ji. Bhai, baat karni hai, saab se. Wo sun rahi hai, please go ahead. Ah, sir, salam alaikum. Wa alaikum salam, sir. How are you? Uh, when uh, when uh, the Pakistan embassy in Islamabad is going to open, and I heard that they are issuing student visa, visit visa, and what about the immigration visa? I don't know, yeah. It's very very difficult to tell. We have to ask that to Trump. This is this is um, we are facing a pandemic for one, but at the same time we are facing worse than a pandemic. A government that doesn't know what they are doing. So. Um, I I have no idea. I'm hoping, inshallah, for after after maybe um, December things are going to at least mm -hmm. be reopened because that's what they kind of said before. But I have no idea, unfortunately. Uh, Mohammed ji, your background is echo ho raha hai, so um, I hope that answers your question. I'm just, I have to disconnect that call. Uh, let's speak to our next caller. Hello, you're on air with Attorney Shafir Ali. Hello. Hello. Yes, please go ahead. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Uh, I have a question. Uh, like, uh, I just applied for my citizenship mm -hmm. and wanted mm -hmm. to check uh, if it is okay to travel during this out of country. Or yes, should that's I a good it? question. Yes, definitely. You can travel, but don't go for more than 90 days. Um, because then you might lose the jurisdiction issue. So you can travel, um, but make sure someone is here also to pick up the mail if there's any kind of... But don't travel yeah. also before your fingerprint because they can call you any time for fingerprint. But right now... No, I, I already had a fingerprint. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. So in this case, yeah, you can travel. Just won't go more than 90 days. And in case you get your interview, you have to have someone here to postpone it until you come back. But don't travel more oh, than 90 okay. days because of the jurisdiction issue. Okay? Okay. 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 Thank you. Thanks for the info. Thank you. Thank you're you welcome. very much for calling in. Hello, you're on air with Attorney Shafi Rali. Can you please turn off the... Okay. Hello? Hello. Hello. Hi. Yes, please hey, go I... ahead. Okay, I had a question uh, regarding I-485. I-485. What's your question? So, I have I have an I-485 pending with the USCIS since... Uh, uh, this uh, February, so it has been approved. I I got a fingerprinting appointment done last June, and uh, I got a uh, letter from the USCIS saying that I need to take the fingerprinting again within two months. So that appointment is like next uh, 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 next month on the tenth. Okay, so you already did your fingerprint when you said? It's uh, February. 
Okay, they want you to do it again. Okay, there are two reasons for that usually. Number one, either the system didn't register it or you have a problem with your fingerprint, with your fingers itself. Um, some people do have this, especially from, from our countries because of all the chemicals people use, um, unfortunately. And uh, it does happen once in a while. You have to redo it. So you don't have to panic. This is something that does happen. So just go ahead sure. and redo it, and then hopefully your case will be cleared. Okay? Got it. So there is nothing to worry about. It's just It just happens sometimes. Is that what you're saying? Yes. It's okay. something that happens, especially just to give you an insight. Do uh, you know how people and uh, ladies in our, in our countries uh, or people who work with chemicals, their mm. fingerprint gets completely uh, erased on their, on, their, on their hand? Okay. And in this case, then what will happen if they're not able to get your fingerprint right, there will be no biometrics. They are going to ask you to provide a police report from every country where you have lived for more than six months. For example, let's say you live in, in, in India mm. for 10 years, you have to provide a police report from there. And if okay. you're living in India in a different state, you have to provide from each state. And if you're living, yeah. for example, in Dubai, you have to provide from there too. So you, yeah. that's what happens at the next step if the fingerprint doesn't go through. Just make sure you, you clean your hands and all the stuff when you go because um, that's what causes the issue of the fingerprint. But see, Attorney Shah, the, that's that's the thing because when um, uh, when people do go for their fingerprinting and the person who's there to help them, they also check, right, if it's come properly or not. And then at that time, they just tell you, okay, this wasn't proper. Can you do it again? And after that, if they're sending a letter and saying it didn't come through or you just have to come again, I think that's what that is what is worrying the caller. Yeah, I, I, they won't know. The problem is that okay. uh, they, the system will register that they got it. But then what will happen when the matching is going to start on the system, they, they don't have the access to those matching. Just note that those people who are doing your fingerprint are contractors. They don't have access to your, to your documents. These are, these are properties of the FBI, CIA, etc. So all they're doing is just saying, okay, my system is registering. I got the whole copy of your okay, fingerprint okay. and I send it there. But what happens is that if you have a small line or a couple of lines broken in there, everything changes for the FBI. And guess what? It changes the whole dynamic there. And that's what is happening for a lot of people. Hmm. It's not very frequent, but it's not a big thing to worry about. And if you have any problem, give me a call at the office and I'll do a consultation yeah. and I'll guide you. Yeah. Okay? Hey, I had, I had uh, one more question if I may ask. Sure, please go sure, ahead. Sure. Hey, so I also got an RFP for the birth certificate for both me and my wife. Uh, for me, the birth certificate is actually registered within three months of my birth, but the issue date is, uh, uh, you know, 10 years later. For my wife, both the registration and the issue is uh, 10 years later than when she was born. So what additional evidence do we have to provide for the RFE for the birth certificate? Okay, that's another interesting question because mm -hmm. I get it all the time. Whenever you have a, a birth certificate normally in most countries, except for India because of the system, and not everywhere in India, by the way, um, birth certificates are supposed to be issued at your time of birth, like maybe three months, four months later. And if it is reprinted maybe 10 years later, it's still the original certificate, so you're still good with that. However, if the birth certificate now with the new system of registry in India is, is obtained at a later stage, it's called a latent birth certificate, in this case you need two affidavits from people who know you, who know you and basically states that, hey, we know this person and this person was born on so-and-so date and we were present or we know about his, his, his birth or her birth. So you will need to get those two people. And usually, another question I get frequently, oh, give me a template of the affidavit. Affidavits are issued by the law of the land. So because it's basically witnessing that, hey, you're telling the truth. So if you go to once, uh, to India, the, system, the way they write the affidavit is totally different. You need a notary to write it and stamp paper, etc., etc. In America, just, just a simple affidavit. And you go to a notary, which is not really, who's not really a lawyer, who can actually just file the case for you. So uh, you will need those two affidavits and also put other documents like school records, medical records, ration cards, pictures, all the things that prove your birth. Just put it in there and you should be fine. Okay. Okay, cool. Thank okay. you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much for Good calling luck. in. If you'd like to get in touch with Attorney Shafirani after the show on the office number, it's 510-742-5887. Let's speak to our next caller. Hello, you're on air with Attorney Shafirali. 
Okay, yeah, sure. Thank you. Uh, hi, Mr. Shah. Uh, thank you for your guidance. Hi. You're welcome. Yeah. Um, I have a question regarding the uh, visitor visa. Is it a good time to file visit visa? Uh, as I'm not sure whether in India the U.S. consulate offices are open or not yet. Uh, and is it, in general, a good time to file the visit visa or not? Well, people are still visiting. Filing the visa, well, a lot of people are still applying. But is it a good time or not? It's the same thing. They have not changed. Except the problem getting a date for the appointment is taking a long time. But the uh, questions are the same, the requirements are the same, plus now they're, of course, checking about COVID, etc. Mm. No, in the sense, I uh, uh, I, um, so do you, I, uh, do you mean that if, if the reforms or if the rules have become any stricter because of all that is going on? Yes, uh, that is one thing. And uh, one other thing is that... Have uh, the offices open? Yeah, offices open. Yeah, and, and how long it takes for the interview... Uh, uh, because uh, just Mr. Shah mentioned that. Mm. Yeah, because we don't want any rejections, right? So that's why uh, there's a little bit of concern over there. Yes, exactly. For number one, how strict it has become, yes, it is a little bit more strict, of course, mm. because of the health issues, definitely. And um, But the, the questions are pretty much the same. You have to prove your intent of going back. So... People are still getting it. I just got a, someone who got it uh, one week ago or something. So it's not a problem. And I don't handle those because it's a waste to put a lawyer involved in that. Now, the second question, how much time is taking, it depends on the embassy. The last I just talked to a client. He, he just did an appointment. He got it for March, I think, in Delhi. He took I an appointment know. now and got it for March? Yes. <laughs> Wow. And okay. I don't know how much, yeah, how much is 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 a trend there, but I don't have a, a real trend. Like I have not asked four or five people to get an idea. But there are some kind of provision now to expedite things, but not for the visitor visa. Mm. So it is it is getting really kind of um, a headache to get the timing, actually to get the stamping. And I don't, I'm thinking oh, the appointment now takes around two to three months to get it, minimum. Okay, and I have one more uh, question that um, sure, sure. I am going to file the visit visa for my brother and uh, uh, his two sons, um, and their passports have different mother names, like um, uh, by mistake in one of uh, the passport um there is a complete name as for the birth certificate, and another one has a shorter version of that. So, uh, does it matter for the visit visa, or should we worry, or just file regardless of that, and we can change that later? Um, it all depends. I would recommend to do the change before you get any kind of visa, because that might create problems, but... If in case you can get some affidavits that will prove that this is the real mother, etc., it will be helpful if you cannot change the passport or the birth certificate. Is it on the birth certificate you saw a mistake or just on the passport? I think it's just on the passport, I believe. I will double check on the birth certificate, um, but I think it's on the passport. That And the passport officer said that you can change it. Uh, so we are just uh, thinking that whether... It's basically the matter of time that if we are going to change that, then another month or two we have to wait for that, uh, and then we can go for the visa. Otherwise, we can right away go for the visa with the different mother names in the passport, even though the it's the same uh, mother, but uh, the spellings or something like that is a problem. Spelling is one thing, but if it is a different mother, then we have a problem. Especially yeah, so say, the passport yeah, so, so in the India, uh, the additional, you know, additional like uh, with the with the name, the additional things comes up like Kumar or Bhai or those kind of things. Now, if it is just a okay, for example, let's say my name is Shah Iqbal Nawaz Rali. I have a long name, right? I use Shah Rali because it's short. Some people call me Nawaz. Some people call me Iqbal. So, it's um. If it is that, you're fine because then it's just a matter of one middle name inserted or removed. But if it is like, for example, someone will call me 
maybe Ira, <laughs> then it's not, it's not going to be good. We have a problem because you don't want to have an issue later on. They say you lied on anything, right? And then you'll be charged of misrepresentation. So give me a call if you want. I can go over things with you in more details. But I will recommend you change it before you make any move if the name of the mother appears on the passport. I don't know because sometimes I've never noticed it. I know the father's name. I don't remember whose name. But usually the husband or things like that appears. But I don't know for parents if they are minors or something like that. So you want to to make sure that you got this right. Because um, now if you want to go ahead and start the process of changing it, in the meantime you get your visa. That's fine too. And then you can always change it and add it there. But Later on, you will have to inform the immigration, the, uh, the, I mean the State Department, U.S. Embassy, that there is a mistake on that, so you're correcting it. But that creates more complications. So the, the, the biggest issue is how much difference are there. Got it. Got it. Okay. Yeah, so let me, let me double check on that birth certificate as well. And then yes. uh, based on that, double check on that. So if, if there's a problem with the birth certificate, uh, then what is your uh, input for that? Um, then you 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 need to really get this corrected, or get two affidavits to prove the real name and a declaration, etc. Then it gets a little bit more tricky to to deal with it. Okay. 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 Thank you. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you very that's much for good. calling in and asking your question. Uh, yeah, birth certificates. Uh, you know that that's a, that was a great question over there because birth certificates were like my birth certificate. It doesn't even have my name on it. It has my mother's name on it. It just has a baby in front of it. <laughs> so I can't really prove it's my birth certificate. I think. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's it's it's, it's no, but it, this is an interesting part with India. I'm, I'm not born in India, but uh, I've learned so much with this birth certificate. You know each state has different, like uh, states I think like Pondicherry and, 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 and places like Goa, they did have um, uh, they did have a birth certificate even back in the 20s because they were governed by Portuguese and, and French yes. and it was mandatory and if you go in other states where the British was, was ruling they didn't even care <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's kind of a little bit very, very um, you learn about history because I met someone the interesting part, I met a family where the parents had birth certificate, but the children didn't because they migrated <laughs> from Goa. Okay. And I was thinking, I say, okay, that's interesting. I never seen this, but yeah, it, it did happen. And uh, um, and you you need to be careful because now with the new registry system, which is good in terms of getting, but there are a lot of mistakes happening there. And plus, uh, if you look at the rules, those latent, what we call it, latent birth certificate are not accepted as primary evidence. So you still have to go and get um, get a, a two affidavits to back those birth certificates. So mm-hmm. just don't, you can send it, but they won't really accept it as, as primary evidence. So make sure you have secondary evidence to back it. Like, for example, mm-hmm. uh, uh, not for example, but uh, like uh, two affidavits, uh, school records, um, you name it, all the stuff. Uh, school record, ration card, health records, etc. Okay. Uh, all right. So, again, before we go further, we have about five more minutes. Listeners, if you have any questions, you can call us right away. 510-657-1170 is the studio number. That's 510-657-1170. Attorney Shapi Rali's office number is 510-742-5887. That's 510-742-5887. And the website for more information about how he can help you, what are the other uh, areas where he can can uh, definitely help you and your case. You can log on to the website PiraliLaw.com. That's P E E R A L L Y L A W dot com. PiraliLaw.com. Uh, listeners, the office is in Newark, um, here in the uh, Bay Area, also in San Francisco, and the other office is in Washington D.C. So. You know, from East Coast to West Coast, uh, definitely you can be helped with you know uh, by by Shah Pirali Law Group. Um, Attorney Shah, uh, we are about like you know five and uh, four and a half minutes away from the end of the show. What else would you like to talk about today? You know, before we wrap up, what well, else would you like to add? We we are going to kind of recap the same because there are so many things to talk about. Mm-hmm. Um, unfortunately, but I cannot really go over things. But for one. Make sure that you're talking to a good lawyer who's giving you the right advice because 
I get a lot of people. Yesterday I had, um, I think last week, someone calling me and he was giving me stuff that I was surprised. I said, did I not understand the law? But what they did is that they went on those forums and they're reading stuff from there, which is good for, for factual stuff. Like, for example, oh, this has happened to me, this has happened to me. You can read about it. But basing it for the law, it's very pro- problematic because people don't understand really the, the intricacies of, of the law. Whenever I'm giving an advice, I might merge like four or five things in one. You won't even know because I'm making it smooth for you. But I'm talking, for example, someone who's, who's out of status. I'm merging the law of, of, uh, of unlawful presence. The, the period of authorized stay, um, uh, three-year bar in one chart is different sections of the law. And if you miss one of them, you will make a wrong decision. And not saying that you, you should always kind of call an attorney for everything, but for, for certain things you've got to do that because especially an attorney who has experience in it, a lot of attorneys now are jumping to immigration law because they don't see any uh, prospect in other areas. But the problem is that I'm actually I'm fixing so many cases right now that I will it was not supposed to be like that like uh, just like me I, I, I tried to fix something and I hired the wrong contractor he messed it up now it's costing me twice to 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 rebuild that so you have to think it this way it's very very important uh, so make sure that you you talk to a, an experienced attorney and I can give you a second opinion or even handle your case if you give us a call 5107425887 going back now to the situation that we saw the visa bulletin is not out yet hmm. so one important interesting point you brought Ira should we think that we should continue on the same visa bulletin until the new one well your your argument is pretty good because the truth is that hey we don't have anything else we should go by this one having said that they can always come back and say no 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 we we just got delayed technicalities etc etc but we at this point in time i don't have an exact answer for it but you can always try it so now second point we were talking about the nomination of judge barrett which is going to affect immigration definitely um because she's very conservative and and i as you know a it might be good it might be bad but i'm pretty sure it's going to be bad so be ready for that and of course the other thing I was mentioning also, the I-140 uh, downgrading, Texas Service Center just rejected some downgrading because they put premium in it. And I've been telling people not to do that, even though it might be possible. Don't do it now. File your case, and then if you have to upgrade, you upgrade to premium. And also we were talking about the issue of birth certificate, which um, one one in, one couple of callers brought up. Uh, make sure also you have those documents ready because you don't want to get your case rejected for the basic documents need. So now I wanted to thank you all for listening. We'll be back next week, same time with Ira. And again, if you need any help, uh, please call us, 510-7425-887. Anything I told you today is my opinion. You should not act or refrain to act solely on the information provided. You should contact an attorney if you have any questions. Thank you, Ira. Thank you, everybody. We'll be back next week. I think we're done now, right? Yes, we are at the end of the show. Thank you very much for being here, attorney Ira. Like you said, you know, people might <laughs> this yeah. is Rita <laughs> signing off. Thank you, Attorney Shah, for being here. Take care. You too. And the listeners, Attorney Shah Pirali will be back with us next week, yani ki Wednesday ko, so we're 10 se leke 11 baje tak on air with us. Meanwhile, you can log on to the website piralilaw.com or call 510-742-5887. Have a beautiful Wednesday.